Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Alrighty, let's, let me bring you up to speed just so that you guys understand where we are. You remember yesterday the news came out that a man by the name of John General, aka John Nundwe, he's a he's one of these so-called men of God that resides over there in Matero constituency. He was yesterday arrested and charged with the offense of raping a married woman in her matrimonial home on her matrimonial bed that's the story that came out and it sits everywhere and because such a story has broken out it's everybody's talking about it now let's let's be clear uh, after the arrest because you know the accusation or the allegation of rape is bailable if somebody says you raped me and they report you to the police the police arrest you the, po the police record a warn and caution statement and if and when you meet the bail conditions they let you go it's 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 erroneous it's misleading for anyone to think that uh, be just because you've been accused because you've been arrested because you've been charged it doesn't mean that you are going to spend the rest of your life in prison prior to going to trial the charge of rape the accusation of rape is bailable once you meet the bail conditions which is what John General did he met the bail conditions and he was released but what I found interesting as soon as he was released and this thing was everywhere the story was everywhere John General took to his Facebook page and he began to talk about everything under the Sun except the issue he began to defend himself saying and, and he was using the name of God to cover up his indiscretions he went on Facebook live and he was telling his followers his constituents people that believe every word that comes out of his mouth these are people that are drowning in the Kool-Aid for those of you that are Pentecostal Christians when you hear that phrase Kool-Aid you know exactly what I'm talking about this cult leader that has his entire congregation eating from the palm of his hand because he has fed them the lie that he is next to God that he is some type of deity and which is very indicative of of cult leaders anyway he he goes on his Facebook page and he starts saying God is greater than any difficulty God is greater than any battle God watches over me in ways that nothing else will nothing else would and he went on and on and on and on and all of his followers jumped on his page because you know as soon with these cult leaders the moment you begin to use scripture to conceal your sin to conceal your 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 misdeeds the moment you use scripture there are people out there all you have to do is quote the Bible they'll forget everything you've done they'll just type amen I receive amen pastor you are telling the truth yes God is great completely ignoring the elephant in the room 
totally sidestepping, sidelining the elephant in the room. What is the elephant in the room? The elephant in the room is that the man has just been charged with rape. He's been charged with raping a married woman in her matrimonial home on her matrimonial bed. One would think that if you have the courage to face your Facebook audience, it would be proper, kosher, and right for you to at least address the issue. Now, of course, there's some of you that are completely ignorant when it comes to these matters. Some of you will say, no, it's contempt if he talks about that. It is not. You don't even know what contempt means. First of all, the matter is not even in court yet. But contempt doesn't mean you talk about an issue. Contempt simply means you go against the court's instruction. That's what contempt, me contempt means. But some of you, you're so dwanzy. No, the, the pastor, bishop, can't talk about that issue because it's contempt. No, it's not. It's not. He took to Facebook to, to begin to, to, to hoodwink his followers into telling them that no matter what, no matter what you hear about me, no matter what happens, I am still man, God's man of the hour. Zero accountability. Now, you must understand that while we accept and we understand that nobody's perfect, we also accept and understand that the calling of the cloth, the calling of a bishop, of a pastor, is called to a higher level of scrutiny. You are called to a higher standard. It's like, for example, if, if we hear about a police officer who's gone through the training, he's wear, he wears the uniform, and then we hear that the same police officer was, was robbing a bank. Wouldn't that concern you? Wouldn't you turn and say, well, he's a police officer. He should at least understand that he's, he's, he's called to a higher standard by virtue of being a police officer in the same vein by the same token anybody that calls themselves a pastor a man of god a a a a, a product of the calling of god must be held to a higher standard it doesn't mean that they're perfect no no it simply means they are held to a higher standard and because they're held to a higher standard they have to be accountable for the things they do. John General has zero accountability. Let me tell you why. It's simple. Because that edifice, that demon-filled assembly of spiritual rejects that call themselves followers of John General, that thing is built on his personality. It's called the, the cult of personality. There is no mother body, there is no church body, there is no board that John General answers to. He's the sole signatory of the, the signatory of the church account. He's the soul, he's the alpha and the omega. He's the be all and end all. What he says is law in that church. The things that go on within the confines of that compound, you would be shocked if you knew the things that go on in there. You know why? Because he's basically God in that compound in that conclave on the property of his edifice on the property of his church he's god and there are people within that church that see him and view him as god therefore they do not question him they do not challenge him he's not held to any type of accountability he's a law unto himself therefore he can say do anything he wants all he has to do is cover it shroud it camouflage it in god's word and scripture and everybody around them will type amen pastor you are telling the truth i receive pastor the most deviant 
set of human beings you've ever met in your life. Deviant. And, and this is the reason, and let me get to why Kings Malembe has supported John General. It's because they're cut from the same cloth. Anytime you see a fellow so-called man of God that doesn't hold you accountable, but but rather they they aid your sin, they facilitate your sin. In a word, they encourage your sin. You're in the same boat. And this is why church bodies are important. They are critical. When a church body, when you are answerable to a, a, a church body, you're answerable to a higher board. Your, 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 your actions are in check. But if, if, if you're the be all and end all, who's going to challenge you? Bunch of ones and yes, 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 bishop, yes, bishop, yes, bishop, yes, everybody. Nobody is going to challenge you. This is why church bodies, mother bodies are very, they're critical, they're vital. So when you hear Kings Malembe lend his support and his endorsement on John General, aka Johnny Nundwe, there's, there's, they're the same people. They're cut from the same cloth. John General has no one that can put him aside and say, brother, you've erred. Brother, you've sinned. You've sinned against your community. You've sinned against God. You need to repent. You need to seek God's forgiveness. You need to go in front of that congregation and tell your congregation and be honest about your frail, flawed humanity and ask your congregation to forgive you and ask God to forgive you. Not these jokers. You think these jokers think like that. They don't. For them it's about pride. I'm not going to confess it's my church I built it I built it through the sweat of my brow and I will be damned if I let anybody try to take that away from me I would rather die than stand in front of my congregation and admit to my sin and wrongdoing after all I'm God I'm God that's what they say that's what they say. In their minds, they are gods. And, and one of the reasons our clergymen, especially in Africa, this is something that's a bit unique in Africa, is because you have this idea that a pastor is like a chief or a king. Infumu. Have you ever seen these pastors? And this is another red flag. Anytime you see a pastor, a bishop, coming out of his car and the members of that church they bow they kneel they grovel they 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 lay prostrate or prostrate is it prostrate or prostate correct me if i'm wrong they lay on their faces as if they're worshiping god as the man of God emerges from his car. When you see members of a congregation treat their pastor like that, oh, that's a red flag. Listen, if you attend a church where your pastor requires you to bow and to fall at his feet as he comes out of the car, you run from that church like you would run from a Gabon viper. You run from that church like you, like you. You run from that church like you would run from a snake. There's nothing biblical about that. You, you're not called to worship your pastor. Love your pastor. Respect your pastor. Assuming that your pastor is a man of God. Because, you know, the word of God says, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If your pastor is steeped in the word of God. And one of the reasons, I was saying, that one of the reasons we have this problem of worshiping pastors is because we've mixed this traditional idea that a pastor is like a chief or a king in your church. The pastor is not a chief or a king. Jesus said in, in I think it was Mark, the book of Mark, 
He said, because of your tradition, you've made the word of God of none effect. Because of your tradition. So anytime you start wallowing in no nymphomo, he can do no wrong. That's nonsense. It's total nonsense. Love your pastor. Pray for him. Hold him up in prayer as he holds you up in prayer. The, the job of a pastor is to edify, to teach you, to, 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 to expound on the things of God, to speak as of the oracles of God. That's, that's, that's the, the role of a pastor or a bishop. But you jokers, you walk around here kneeling and falling at your feet when he comes out of the car and you start worshiping him. And, and you see, when you have that element, that pastor feels all powerful. Oh, it's, it's intoxicating. Some of you don't realize how intoxicating it is for a man to feel that I am so self-absorbed, I am so important, that my congregation, when they see me emerge, they tremble in the fear of God. Wrong. And it's that same power that ultimately destroys pastors because they feel they are unaccountable. They feel that they don't have to answer to anybody. It's the most powerful, intoxicating feeling that any one human being could ever possess. The power of being all powerful or feeling all powerful. Very intoxicating and it shouldn't be that way. Pastors should be accountable. What Kings Malembe should have done, instead of encouraging his friend in sin, God, Malembe was supposed to go to, the, to, to John General and say, Brother, you've sinned. You've erred. You've lost your way. You've missed the mark. But what does is, what is, uh, Malembe do? No. Uh, you are a true man of God. Yeah, this is just a battle that you are going to weather and the, the demons are trying to get you and God is going to see you are aiding and abetting a sexual predator in the church that's what they are sexual predators and this is not the first time and it won't be the last time that John General will be accused of raping a woman from his church because these guys they pick them from their churches I mean, they've got a whole slew of women in their churches that they can just pick out. As he's preaching on Sunday, he's looking, he's scanning the church. Oh, she's hot. Hey, uh, henchman, find out what her name is. See if we can get her down to the office and um, see if we can talk to her. Just, just find out. Yeah, get me her name. That's how they operate. And equally, you must understand this. I mean, I'm from the church, I know. Okay, Nobody can lie to me about this. This is stuff I know. I grew up in the church. I studied theology. Okay, I did. So here's it. Here's the thing. Um, the flip side of this is, I'm going to tell you something that is going to shock you. But for those of you that are Christians, for those of you that are are you you understand what I'm talking about you know exactly what I'm talking about when I tell you this the flip side of this is that there are certain women within the church especially my heritage my Pentecostal heritage I'm a Pentecostal and I'm very proud to be a Pentecostal we don't get everything right we're got we have a few scoundrels in there but hey that's my heritage and I embrace it embrace it and I love it I love Pentecostalism because I grew up in the Pentecostal church but in my group in, in our Pentecostalism there is a sect of women that are attracted to anointed men or men of the cloth. Let me change that. Let me change that. Sorry, let me retract. There are women that are attracted to clergymen, not anointed, clergymen. And they will do anything to be with the clergyman. I mean, Lady Naisi, and this is not a secret, this is something that she's, she's told us many, many times before. 
she's talked about it very openly so I don't want you guys to sit there and think oh Chitambala is outing Naisi no I'm not these these are words that came out of her mouth this is a this is something that she shared on a very personal level but she shared it with her audience I heard her and I watched her share this and, and the moment she was sharing this I knew exactly what she was talking about Naisi you know Lady Naisi uh, I, 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 I avoid calling her prophetess because I don't believe she's one I believe she's a Christian okay I believe she's a preacher uh, you know but I prefer to call her Lady Naisi Lady Naisi consistently shares how you know because you know she's very pretty she's very attractive she's a very voluptuous woman Naisi shares constantly about how there are bishops all over this country the moment they meet her all they ever want to do is just have sex with her that's all they want to do she says this is something that I consistently have to deal with it does she says if I were to name the bishops in this city who have tried to take my pants off you would be shocked but the truth is nobody would be, nobody would be shocked because nothing shocks anybody anymore what is my point my point is people should people of the cloth should be held to a higher standard doesn't mean they're perfect they're not but they should be at least held to a higher standard and then when they do air air meaning when don't aid and abet their sin don't cover their sin don't do that don't pat them on the back and say no this is the devil this is the enemy Jezebel is trying to bring you down don't do that that's not that's not being accountable people need to be accountable for their sin their wrongdoing I'm yet to meet an African or Zambian man of God that will stand in front of his congregation and say I sinned against you I sinned against my family I sinned that I sinned against God please forgive me I erred in my in my moment of of poor choice I made a poor choice I made a poor decision in my moment of making a poor choice I sinned I erred I did wrong I've offended my church I've offended my family I'm sorry please forgive me you think these Zambian pastors can do that they can't do you know why full of pride full of pride self-absorption self-importance I can't go and stand in front of that congregation. I would rather deny it than admit it. I would rather hide under a thin veneer of Bible quotes and say God is great. The battle is going to be won. I would rather quote we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities. I'd rather do that than stand in front of my congregation and admit my wrongdoing. That's how these chaps think. Dangerous chaps. <laughs> so what's going to happen with John General is that right now, as you and I speak right now, after he's been accused, because it's a big church. Hey, bishop. Not a single person saying, I think uh, you need to seek the face of God, is what you need to do. You need to fall, you need to throw yourself at the foot of the cross, ask God to cleanse you, wash you, uh, uh, and just, uh, and you need to pray. Nobody does that. Instead, they, they, 
You know, for, you know those cars with the, with the, what do you call those? You know they're cars that have this thing. When you press the button, it lights up, and then it makes a sound. John Deren of Mamu, Mushimoto, Nashapura, I'm still accused of rape. Chof Mamu. No humility, zero accountability, full of pride, self centeredness. <laughs> these, these papas, the most self centered chaps I've ever met in my life. Very dangerous people. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.